Okay, I'm going to go over automation and Samplitude and Reaper, uh, what the differences are, and what I like and what I don't like. Uh, some of the big differences are that Samplitude uses mouse modes, Reaper doesn't. Uh, Samplitude also puts your automation data over your, um, your audio data, which I'll show you what that looks like in a minute. Um, Reaper doesn't do that. Reaper has these dedicated lanes. And thirdly, Reaper has this behavior that I really dig for um, for editing that makes edits really uh, quick. Okay, so let's get started. This is Samplitude here. So the first thing you need to do is show some automation curves. You can click on volume or pan. They're actually part of the interface. That's convenient. Um, so if we just click on it, there's our automation curve. You could also get to other parameters that are on the track by uh, right clicking. So here's here are the other plugins and parameters that you could automate if you wanted to. Uh, I don't have any plugins on here, it's just kind of the stock EQ and the auxiliary sends. So now we want to add some points to this automation. Now I'm not going to ride the fader and write in um, automation that way. I do that, but usually I come back with a mouse and touch it up. So I'm basically going to show you how you would work with a mouse to do automation. You can't actually write points in this mouse mode. So this, this is one thing that's um, specific to, well, it's different from Reaper. Samplitude has all these mouse modes up here, and they're basically modes that you can go into where the mouse behaves like a, gives you a specific set of tools to work with. Right now we're in universal mouse mode, and that's the mouse mode that most people uh, would expect typically in a DAW, where you can move your audio, change the endpoints, drag out the endpoints, also, um, make your edit, slice and dice it like this. But we need to be over to this mouse mode right here. There is a temporary keyboard shortcut you can hit. I believe it's dash or minus. And as long as you hold down the key, you'll be in that mouse mode. And then when you take your finger off it, you go back to whatever mouse mode you were in before. I should also point out that this is the mouse mode I'm going to use to edit uh, this automation data. But there's also other mouse modes that can edit the data too. There's about, I think there's about three mouse modes where you can edit automation data. I just find this particular one the most useful. Going down to our curve here, you can see that cursor has changed, at least it has if the screen capture software is working, to this hand. And you can just click on it and add these points. And once the points are in there, you can click on the points. You can tell this one is selected. Get your mouse over it till you get this kind of like uh, cross thing and then click and drag and move it. You can hold down shift if you want to constrain it horizontally. That's a handy feature because when you're doing automation on vocals or something like that, you probably want to keep the automation lined up with the vocals but just change the volume a little. If you want to select several points, see this what my mouse is doing right now, you can this is your lasso mode. This is your lasso in this mouse mode. So you can lasso whatever points you want. And then if you want to move this line segment here, you have to hover over one of these points and uh, click and drag. You can hold down Shift 2 and constrain it, just like before. If you want to get rid of these points for this particular curve, you can select them like this, hit Delete. You could also, let me make this more dramatic. Uh, you could also, if you have tons of automation on this track and you just want to trash it all, you can come up to the Automation menu, Edit Curve, and down here is delete all curves. Make sure you realize it's deleting all curves on that track. You don't want to use it if you just want to delete the automation for something specific like pan or a plugin because it's going to wipe everything out um, on the track. All automation. Okay. As it says. Just telling you to be safe. So all your automation is over your audio data right here. And if you start adding a lot of different curves and you have a lot of data here, it kind of can get cluttered up. So that's one thing Reaper does. Uh, I'll show you. It, it actually puts the automation data down here in what looks like a track, but it's a lane. You can make these things, you know, visible, not visible. So you're only seeing one automation parameter at a time, like just seeing volume, just seeing pan. Right? Let me add some points here. Okay, so if we had volume and pan here, of course I could come in, edit the volume, edit the pan. If you really have a lot of automation going on, you're going to have to make it visible from that menu and then do the edits and then turn it off again and then come back out. So it can be a little time consuming. 
The other thing that you might want to do is move the automation with audio. You have to get out of this mouse mode, which is for editing automation. Go back to Universal. And then you have to make sure that this button is clicked over here. This is the button that locks the audio to the automation. So it's clicked right now. In theory, I should be able to just move this and all the automation will come with me. Let's see if that works. It's working. Okay, so that's good. Uh, I have had problems with Samplitude um, not linking to the automation. And I move the audio and the automation stays there and I you know, end up cutting or pasting um, automation points and it's not fun. Now there is, I guess, a solution. I was told that if you use object automation, um, that never happens. So let me briefly describe object automation. Uh, you can think of this automation right here as belonging to the track, but there's also this other level in Samplitude, the object level. And every clip of audio, this clip right here, is considered an object. And you can actually write object automation right to that clip, and the automation belongs to the clip. So uh, I guess the theory is, and I haven't tried this out, is that um, that's a lot safer way to move around automation because it's locked right on the audio. It's part of the audio's properties, not the track's properties. Objects are um, kind of a unique thing to Samplitude. Samplitude's definitely taken objects a lot further than any other DAW that I've heard about. Um, but it's a huge topic, um, and I'm not going to get into it here right now. So let's let's take a look at how Reaper handles this stuff. Let's turn on our, an automation curve, same thing as um, as we did in Samplitude. So you click this little button over here that looks like automation. Uh, these are all your parameters. Same thing as in sample, uh, the Samplitude uh, pull-down menu. If we had plugins, they'd all be here. As you can see, there's volume and pan. They're up at the top because they're very um, common things to automate. And when I click on them, you're going to see some uh, what look like tracks appear below here. And those are lanes. That's how uh, Reaper organizes automation by default. Let's click those on. There's volume and there's pan right there. Let's just write some data. Let's get out of here. Now there's no mouse, there are no mouse modes in Reaper, so um, everything's con uh, context and um, keys on your keyboard. The screen capture uh, program is not picking this up, I'm pretty sure, but uh, my cursor is changing into uh, helpful other things, letting you know that uh, you're ready to edit or uh, add points to the automation curves. All you have to do is hold down Shift, click on here and let's add some points right here too. Uh, same thing with with um, Samplitude. You can just click to select, get on top of this point, your cursor changes, which I, I don't think you can see, but your cursor does change. Click and drag automation points. You can also right click and lasso and, and grab more than one at a time like this. But the really cool thing about Samplitude, or not Samplitude, Reaper, is that you can go into these segments, and uh, this is the default behavior. You can just grab a segment. Again, my cursor's changing. You probably can't see that. Grab a segment and move it. You don't have to select the individual points, and you don't have to hold down Shift. The default behavior is to uh, constrain it horizontally. And this is something that's really useful. It might not sound like a big deal, but after you do this like 30, 40, 50 times, it's a lot easier than selecting the two points, holding down shift, hovering over a point, and bringing it up and down, um, which is a samplitude behavior. This is really great if you want to just increase things a decibel or two. Um, let's say that there's a vocal here that you wanted a syllable to come up a decibel or two. You could just go like this. The other thing is whenever you select these a segment or a point you get these guides. See that line? Now let me select one of these. See those two lines, the vertical lines? And that's nice because you can line stuff up with the audio. See that I'm lining this up with a peak of audio here. There's also this great uh, kind of ghosted out area down in the lane. See it's, it's uh, the same data that's up here, the same audio, but it's ghosted out. This is also helpful for lining things up. Okay, so 
you may say to yourself, well, I don't really want to deal with all these lanes here because uh, I have 40 tracks in this project and I have automation on half of them and now I've got uh, 60 tracks to look at and that really clutters things up. Um, what you can do pretty easily is come back here, click on this, your automation button, just say hide all. And then you can bring them back, show all active. Active just means that they've actually got data in them. So we could hide them, show them. Um, the other thing you could do, but I don't really like working this way, but if you do, um, you can right click on here and choose to show them in the media lane, which is up here, what I would call the track. Not as easy to edit here, kind of kind of cluttered. So I prefer to just um, work with them, whoops, work with them in the envelope lanes. Moving automation. Never had a problem with Reaper moving automation. It's pretty simple. Make sure this button is clicked down. You can kind of tell by this the icons here that um, it's automation locked to object. So you just would click on your object, move your object, and all your automation goes with it like that. Thanks for watching, and if you want to put a comment up on my blog, uh, bluedoststudio.com or uh, YouTube, this should be on YouTube, feel free to question, comment if I miss something. Okay, thanks for watching.